Hey everyone, so just left the local wood supply lumber store. Uh, that was an adventure. Uh, got some eight quarters walnut, eight quarters hard maple. The friendly associate rang it up, thought I was gonna pass out. Yeah, wood's expensive. Uh, so we're on our way back to the shop and let's see what we can come up with. All right, guys, we made it back to the shop all in one piece. Uh, like I said, we picked up some eight quarter walnut, some eight quarter hard maple, beautiful pieces of wood here. Um, you know what I notice? You ever know when people go through a drive through and somebody pays for your meal and you pay it back, whatever you want to call it? Uh, never happens at the wood store. The guy in front of me just wouldn't do it. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, but anyways, we're gonna make some hardy cutting boards. Uh, been getting a lot of requests for them. Nothing like you buy in those big box local stores. Nothing flimsy, nothing very similar. Um, we're gonna make some really thick, strong, long lasting, real cutting boards. Um, so let me do a quick cleanup of the shop. A little spring clean it as is. Um, it's a little messy in here. And we're gonna get ready to build some cutting boards and make another mess. So, see you in a few. First, we're gonna go over to the miter station, um, chop these boards down to a uh, manageable size. Um, yes, this is a old miter saw I have. It is not no fancy thousand dollar name brand saw, but it works. Uh, I do need a new blade um, that is coming up um, so I can make a better cut. Then we're gonna come over to the Bench top joiner just made it. Uh, this is an eight inch joiner and the boards were seven and three quarters. So I barely made it, but we will get a nice flat spot, um, nice 90 degree edge on one side. Give us a starting point for the milling process. One day I will be able to get a full size joiner, make the process a lot easier. Now I'm gonna go over to the thickness planer. We're gonna flatten it out, get a even thickness, flat, smooth surface. Use some of my uh, step up blocks and get us a right cutting dimension. We're going for an inch and three quarter wide right here. We'll rip down as many as we can off of this piece of walnut and then we will go with the maple. Watch your fingers. And yes, I did uh, keep the volume down because who wants to listen to a saw spin? It's not very pleasing, um, but you get the point. It's loud, it's sharp. Watch those fingers. All right, now we're gonna get us into some clamps here. We're gonna spread some glue, lots and lots of glue. I'm using Tight Bond 3 here. Uh, it's good for cutting boards and food safe stuff. Uh, spread it on there. Uh, yes, the piece on the far right, it looks like it's a little bit shallower than the rest of the pieces. So is the piece all the way on the left. Um, I didn't have enough maple. We were shy about a quarter inch, so I made them both the same size on both ends, so the pattern still matches up. We're gonna line them up real good here on the edge, try to minimize waste. Everything clamped up nice and tight. Now we're gonna let the glue dry overnight and get back at it tomorrow. All right, guys, day two in the shop. Uh, we had these boards glued up overnight. Should be nice and dry right now. First step, we're gonna go ahead and pull them out of some clamps, uh, get it cleaned up. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a drum sander yet. Uh, this is a little bit too wide to go through my planer. So we are going to come up with something. Um, might, might even get into a little bit of hand playing. So we'll make it up as we go. But let's get this baby out of clamps and let's get to it. Here we start unscrewing all the clamps. You can never have enough clamps in the shop. 
Anytime you think you have enough, you end up buying another. Here I'm just taking a little scraper, scraping off any excess glue on the seams. Um, I use my chisel just to get some of the big globs of glue off that don't interfere with the hand planer. Running a hand planer is not fun at all. I give props to all the old school woodworkers. It is a very physically demanding task, but it works great. I'm not going to lie. Once I was done with the hand planing process, it felt like I did about 2000 push-ups. All right, guys, had some high spots, uh, but yep, it's all playing down. Um, I gotta say, hand planning is no joke. Um, I didn't record the whole thing, it took quite a while. I had a bunch of high spots, uh, no good. Um, if anybody wants to donate uh, to the cause for a drum sander, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, email me, um, but it's all done. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and set up my crosscut sled. What we're going to do is we're going to chop this thing down. I'm about an inch and five-eight strips um, so that we can rotate them up to the end grain. Right now we are on the edge grain. Uh, we're going to rotate up on the end grain, alternate the patterns, give it that checkered board look. Um, so let's get the crosscut sled set up and see how it comes out. All right, we got our cross cut sled set up here. Uh, got our blade set up to height. Like I said, we're gonna cut an inch and five eight strips. Uh, we'll be cutting on this side. So I'm gonna use my blocks here, inch and a half, inch and five eighths. Got my handy dandy stop block I built out of oak. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it down. Now our cut piece, and don't worry, the saw is off right now. It's unplugged for safety reasons. Um, our cut piece will be exactly inch and five eighths from the blade, so all our pieces should come out the same um, width, uh, so we have a even uniform pattern. All right. All right, we got all the pieces cut up, ripped up in strips. Um, we're going to try to make two boards out of this. What we're going to do here is we're going to rotate everything to the end grain portion. Got to get the example like that. Then we're going to alternate every other one. And what that's going to do for us is going to give us our checkerboard pattern. Um, then we'll clean it all up, flatten it again, sand it down, edge profile it, yada, yada. You'll see. Uh, so let me go ahead and clean up all this sawdust. It's all over the shop and we'll start the glue up process. All right, we're going to rotate these over to the edge grain, put a bunch of glue on there, spread it all around. Make sure you cover all the spots uh, so you get a good squeeze out good adhesion once we get all the glue smeared around we're gonna rotate it back up to the end grain make sure we line up all our seams as best as we can um, so you do want to pay a lot of attention and focus on all your seams here and also make sure you are putting them in the right pattern nothing worse than gluing something up and realizing you put the wrong piece there once you get all lined up, we're going to squeeze up the clamps, get a good squeeze. You don't want to over tighten the clamps. Um, 
you, you want to make sure you have some glue left in there. Uh, double check my seams, make sure everything's good, give it a few squeezes, clamp it up, and then we're going to do the same thing to the other one. All right, everybody, day three, cutting board process. Uh, yeah, three days, uh, not complete days. In grain cutting boards require an extra set of glue ups, therefore allows extra time for drying. And uh, that's why in grain cutting boards usually cost a lot more. There's a, a bigger process to them. But today we're gonna try to finish these things up. We're going to get them out of the clamps scrape some of the excess glue off and then we're going to go into an extremely tedious sanding process which i won't record all of it uh, we're going to go from an 80 grit to a 120 to a 180 220 we will water pop it uh, raise the grain redo another 220 300 400 uh, and then we'll get ready to start uh, the mineral oil bath uh, we're also going to edge profile it round over the edges possibly add some juice grooves, um, tidy them up. So they're gonna look a lot better than what they look right now. So stay tuned and let's keep at it. All right, we're out of the clamps and we're gonna start sanding. Uh, yes, that is a tedious process, hours and hours of sanding. So I will not record the whole thing, um, but y'all get the point. Uh, we're going to go over to the crosscut sled. I have it all sanded down to 80 grit right now, nice and smooth. We're going to go up and line up the edges. Ooh, wow, I shouldn't have put my camera on my crosscut sled. Look at that bounce. Gives a nice little effect. But we're going to turn this thing around, make sure we got square edges, cut it down to dimension, to the size we want. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for both boards. This longer board just barely fit between the crosscut sled and the blade. Uh, probably not real safe to do, but I was able to make it safely. Get it all lined up. Now I got my blade set at a 45, uh, just taking a little bit off the bottom. I got my stop block set up so we can get an even cut, uh, symmetrical on all sides. Uh, line up all corners here and we're gonna do the same thing on both boards, give it a nice little 45 cam on the bottom. Kind of gives it that little floating look. Um, I like it. Chop them all down, make sure, keep your fingers clear. We're gonna do the big board now. Um, they both got identical camphers on them. And we got them all cut. Look at those edges, nice and clean. And we're going to go over to the router table and we're going to do a slight round over on all the top edges here. Uh, I don't like having sharp edges on the top of the board. Kind of gives it a nice natural flow. Um, we raise the bit up little by little. You never want to make a pass all in one shot. Here I built some templates from Half Inch MDF. I uh, cut them off screen. Uh, we're gonna put some blue painter's tape on there. 
uh, we're going to utilize some CA glue and some accelerator. Get the templates to stick onto the boards. I did mark up and center my locations on the board off screen here. Uh, we're going to stick these on here to CA glue and accelerator. It will create a tight bond in uh, literally seconds. So we're going to get them stuck on there. Trim off some of the excess tape. And this will give us a nice spot for our router to rest up against even space all the way around the board. And we're going to use a 3 8 cove bit, about 3 16 deep, and go all the way around. All right, we are all sanded down, 80 grit, 120, 180, down to 220. We went ahead and cut in a 3 16 inch deep uh, cove bit juice groove we got a 45 camphor on the bottom right now we're gonna set up to raise the grain uh, that will release the fibers so you can do another 220 grit and the board will forever stay smooth no matter how much uh, moisture it gets on it uh, so let's get set up there are little cones here we're gonna spray it down and get back to sanding So we're going to spray uh, some water on the boards. You want to get them wet, not extremely wet. You don't want them to soak too much. But what this does is raises all the fibers in the wood. Um, they're like little hairs in the wood. It'll raise them all up and then we'll go ahead and sand them down and they won't come back up. Now I'm not going to record all the sanding processes after this, but we do a 220 again, 300 and 400 to get them smooth um, after this process. Uh, now that process is done, we're going to go ahead and lather it up in food grade mineral oil. Uh, we're going to wipe it on there really good. Uh, wood gets thirsty and this is the way you feed it. It gets that oil all the way deep inside the pores. Gives it that nice vibrant look and it lets the wood last a very long time. Um, I did put a, a nice even coat all the way around it. Uh, let it sit for 24 hours soaking in there. I did come in later on in the night and add another coat on there just to make sure it soaked up real good. Once all the mineral oil was done after 24 hours, we dried it off. I put my wax on there mineral oil and beeswax mixture it's a wood conditioner leather on there let it sit there for about 20 minutes and then use the orbital buffer it gives it a nice even smooth sheen helps repel against moisture also all right we got them all done coming out real nice got a nice little sheen to them um what we did do is said so we added the juice groove camphor the edges you have 45 camphor on the bottom i did put some little half inch rubber feet on them uh gave them a nice mineral oil bath for 24 hours we dried it off then i used my mineral oil beeswax conditioner on them buffed them out with the buffer um now i'm just debating thinking about putting some handles right in here some 10 inch long handles uh, I'm not sure um, let me know what you think what you prefer uh, drop a note down in the comments and uh, maybe I'll add them not sure um, but these will be up on the website here pretty soon and hope you enjoyed the video I will be making some more uh, thank you for all your support thank you for subscribing